Hi, and welcome back to the course on thermodynamics. So we are still on the unit four of this course. So before we proceed with this lesson, let us first review what we have discussed so far in this unit. So in the previous lesson, we have discussed about heat engines, and we only focus on engines that undergo a cyclic uh, process. So in these engines, the work done by this engine is just, it's just the total heat absorbed by the engine and the total heat uh, released by the engine to a lower temperature regions. So the efficiency of this engine is just the work output over the heat input to the engine. So we, we also have mentioned that most automobile, automobile engines uh, operate under the principle of uh, heat engines. So in this uh, lesson, we will be talking about heat engines, uh, more specifically, the internal combustion engines. So internal combustion engines are heat engines that combusts or burns the working substance, uh, usually what we call fuel, in order to do uh, work. So this is a simulation of a four-cylinder internal combustion uh, engine. So uh, the cylinders, in this case, the four cylinders are not shown so that you will know what happens inside of each uh, cylinder. So you will notice that the pistons produce uh, rotations and these are actually connected to the uh, mechanisms of, the, of uh, an automobile. Uh, basically, uh, in order uh, you're converting the rotation of the pistons to the rotation of the uh, wheels of your cars or uh, automobiles. So, in an internal combustion engine, they don't use the same air or gasoline uh, over and over again, but we can still analyze them in terms of a cyclic process since the same amount of uh, fuel and air mixture enters the engine every uh, cycle. So, uh, an internal combustion engine is named after its working substance. So for gasoline engines, the working substance is gasoline. For diesel engines, the working substance or the fuel is uh, diesel. Okay. So this is a diagram of a four-stroke uh, engine cycle. So the first stroke is the intake stroke. In the intake stroke, the intake valve is open we're in uh, a mixture of the fuel and air enters your piston so that's the intake stroke it takes in air and what uh, sorry air and fuel mixture and then uh, it is then compressed adiabatically compressed without any heat involved it's compressed adiabatically during the compression stroke so when it's compressed the pressure actually increases and during this high pressure stage, uh, a spark plug ignites the air and the fuel mixtures. So there's no stroke happening. There's no volume change during the ignition. So there's no stroke happening during the ignition by these spark plugs. Uh, but because of the spark, this will actually uh, expand. So the piston or the cylinder will again expand adiabatically without uh, any heat uh, any heat transfer uh, to the system and this is what now what we know as the power stroke so basically there's a spark it creates basically a mini explosion inside and then it causes the mixture the, the burn the combusted mixture to expand and that is what we call the power stroke hot burn mixture expands pushing the piston uh, down and then uh, after the power stroke when all of the uh, uh, when all of the uh, energy 
in the combustion is expanded uh, you now then have the exhaust stroke so the gas now uh, is being compressed by the piston and this is done by opening the exhaust valve so basically you you will now see here some smoke and this smoke will now go to your muffler pipe of your uh, vehicles and the cycle will then repeat again to the uh, intake stroke so after the exhaust stroke it exhausts all the burnt uh, air and fuel in a mixture it will then undergo again uh, go again to the intake stroke really. it will now uh, get fresh new air and fuel mixture so if we try to relate this with our uh, animation that we have seen uh, earlier so considering just one uh, cylinder so you will notice the blue part <coughs> actually uh, implies that the mixture is cold so you will notice <coughs> uh the blue part is when the mixture the mixture is basically cold it's compressed and then it is ignited it becomes somewhat orange and then it expands and then it becomes uh grayish and it, at that time that's already the exhaust so the exhaust is then uh exhaust valve is then opened so that you can uh eject the uh burnt fuel through your muffler or pipes muffler pipes okay so that's basically how a four stroke engine uh works four stroke engine uh, cycle uh works so <clears throat> an idealized model for a gasoline engine is or or follows an auto cycle so Otto is a German uh, inventor, Nicholas Otto, and he's the one who designed the Otto engine in the earliest uh, automobiles. So the Otto cycle follows this uh, PV diagram. So in A to B, A to B is what we call the uh, compression stroke. So from A to B. So the volume here initially is R times V, and then the final volume is now so r here the small r here is what we call the compression ratio the ratio from the of the initial volume over the final volume so how much it measures how much the uh, volume is compressed so at state a uh, the intake stroke already happened and from a to b is now a uh, compression stroke it's actually an adiabatic compression so adiabatic compression means no heat is involved so after that one uh, from b to c the mixture the air and fuel mixture absorbs heat and this is due to the ignition part so the park plug uh, ignites the mixture so it has so the mixture now absorbs uh, heat in an isochoric process so the volume doesn't change during the uh, ignition part so there's no change in volume and after that uh, the hot mixture expands adiabatically but again there's no heat involved there's no heat release there's no heat absorbed so it's an adiabatic expansion from c to d and this is the power stroke so after the power stroke <clears throat> uh, from d to a heat is released to the uh, exhaust valve and the gas inside uh, becomes cool again and shrinks or compresses in the process so and that is the cycle uh, as related to the uh, four stroke engine cycle so this is what we call the auto cycle so for an auto engine which is basically a gasoline engine the idealized model for a gasoline engine uh, the efficiency is calculated uh, such this uh using this equation so the efficiency is one minus one over r to the gamma minus one and again uh, r is what we call the uh compression ratio and gamma is of course the uh heat capacity ratio for your gas so for example if you have a compression ratio of eight 
and a gamma of 1.4 assuming ideal gas the, the mixture between the gasoline and your air uh, is an ideal gas if you can assume that then you will have a theoretical efficiency of 0.56 or 56 percent so meaning 56 percent of the fuel used will be uh, actually used to do work to move your car but <clears throat> real engines uh, with this theoretical efficiency can actually just have uh, efficiency as of around 35 uh, 0.35 or 35% uh, so again this is an ideal engine ideal model this equation is an ideal uh, model but real engines usually have a much lower efficiency so around 35% the old uh, gasoline engines usually usually are just 35% efficient so meaning you will just convert 35% of the fuel that you use. 35% of that will be used to move the car. And the remaining 65% will be uh, exhaust. So it will be smoke in your exhaust. So one, uh, the, or the theoretical efficiency of a gasoline engine can actually be increased by increasing the compression ratio R. So if R, if you will notice it from this equation, if R increases, then uh, the, den the denominator increases. And 1 over R is very small because R is already increasing. So 1 over R is small. And 1 minus a very small number is a large uh, efficiency. So in order to get a higher efficiency, your R, the compression ratio, must be very large. So you should, one way to do that is to use a premium high octane gasoline to prevent uh, problems uh, usual problems that gasoline engines usually encounter and one of that is uh, pre-ignition or detonation so when the temperature is too high causing the mixture to explode simult simultaneously without the spark plug so without the spark plug the mixture of the air the air and the fuel mixture just air and gasoline mixture in this case uh, just explodes simultane uh, spontaneously and that can disrupt the cycle the four stroke uh, cycle and it can lead to inefficiency of your engine so another problem of gasoline engine is incomplete combustion so if you don't use high octane gasoline usually uh, the mixture of your gasoline and air uh, does not readily ignite upon ignition using the spark plug and this can lead to unburnt fuel uh, which contains carbon uh, monoxide and some other unburned hydrocarbons in the exhaust so this will be expelled during the exhaust stroke, stroke and this is still a basically unburned uh, air and gasoline mixture so that is the reason why uh, if you have a gasoline engine you must use a uh, premium high octane uh, gasoline gasoline okay so the second uh, internal combustion engine that we will be discussing is the diesel uh, cycle so uh, the diesel uh, sorry the diesel engine and it, of course it follows the diesel uh, cycle so the only difference between a gasoline cycle or the auto cycle and the diesel cycle is during or after the compression stroke so after the compression stroke in the gasoline cycle or the, in the auto cycle uh, an isochoric process happens wherein the pressure increases but the volume doesn't change but here instead of an isochoric process you have an isobaric expansion so the uh, volume slightly increases uh, but the pressure remains the same so in a diesel cycle there's no fuel actually during the intake stroke and the compression stroke and this is uh, the reason why uh, diesel uh, uh, diesel engines have a larger compression ratio because there's at the start at the intake and the compression stroke there's no fuel yet inside there's no fuel diesel and air mixture uh, yet so it's just purely air inside so it's easier to compress air 
to a more smaller volume as compared to if you have a mixture so since there's only air so you can compress it to a very smaller volume hence you will have a larger compression ratio r and if you have a larger compression ratio r then you will have a larger efficiency that's what we have explained uh, earlier so diesel cycle uh, diesel engines are actually more efficient than gasoline engines and in the philippines uh, uh diesel fuel is actually much cheaper because we mostly use gasoline but in other countries they mostly use diesel that's why diesel is much uh, has a much higher price in other countries only in the philippines that diesel is cheaper so uh in a to b it's still an adiabatic compression so only air is compressed in this case there's still no uh there's still no fuel uh but in b to c the fuel is actually injected during the isobaric expansion from b to c so because the fuel is injected from b to c it will cause the fuel to ignite spontaneously so no spark plug is needed in diesel engines so it will just explode simultaneously so the mixture will now absorb heat or the yes your cylinder or the gas inside your cylinder will now absorb heat because of the, the spark because of the uh ignition so <clears throat> after that one the same process happens as in a gasoline engine so there's uh expansion of the hot gas adiabatic expansion so no heat is uh, released to the environment no heat is absorbed by the piston and then uh, exhaust you exhaust the uh, burnt uh, fuel so diesel engines can have theoretical efficiencies of 65 to 70 percent as compared to gasoline with the same assuming we have the same uh, 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 condition initial conditions as a gasoline uh, engine so it's, it has a much higher theoretical efficiencies therefore the real efficiencies of diesel engines are also much higher as compared to gasoline so the one disadvantage of diesel uh, engines is that they must be built to a much tighter uh, tolerance so meaning uh, they need high maintenance especially in the fuel injection system or the fi uh, system so that's it for the two basic uh, internal combustion engines the gasoline engine which can be described by the auto cycle and the diesel engine which can be described by the diesel cycle so we are now done discussing about heat engines and in the next lesson we will now go to another thermodynamic uh, device which is called the uh, refrigerator so I will see you again in the next lesson.